What would make someone murder a family who had no enemies in the middle of the summer with the blue moon fast approaching? Vonsell Smith gave birth to Donald Harton Sr. when she was a teenager. She had two more sons after Donald, John and Richard. They all had a relationship with each other. Vonsell, John, and Richard lived together and took care of one another. Donald would come to the family home every Tuesday to have dinner with his mother and brothers. Neighbors of Vonsell, John, and Richard say that the trio kept to themselves. Many saying that they'd never had conversations with them. They didn't know the family. They never met them. The family lived a humble, quiet existence. To look at them, they just looked like normal, middle-class people. Neighbors had no idea that the family was sitting on quite a bit of money. 49-year-old John worked at Walmart. He was a hard worker and had been employed with the company for 20 years. Richard was 47 and an IT specialist for Homeland Security at the Naval Air Station, Pensacola. On the night of July 28, 2015, the small, tight-knit family was killed. It's quite astonishing that someone would murder Richard because he had such a high-profile career working for the government and the case would receive a lot of attention. Whoever the murderer was, they were bold, to say the least. Even though Von Seal, John, and Richard kept to themselves, they were still important members of their community. This became evident as days passed. Richard's place of employment became concerned when he hadn't showed up for work for days. This was unlike him. They contacted the police and the police carried out a welfare check on July 31st. At the time, the date held no significance. That soon changed as they began their investigation. When investigators arrived to the home, they found what appeared to be a ritualistic killing. They had been beaten over the head with a claw hammer, their throat slit. Richard had been shot in the head near his right ear, and the end of Von Seal's little finger had been cut. Richard was the biggest of the three, so it was assumed that he was the hardest to bring down, and that's why he was shot. Their bodies were buried under piles of clothing. There was a safe in the home, but nothing had been stolen. July 31st, 2015 was the date of the blue moon. Authorities turned their attention to the only surviving son, Donald Hartung Sr. Donald did not live with his mother and brothers. He had his own place. They contacted him the same day they found his relative and informed him about the passing of his immediate family and conducted an interview with him. He did not deny that he saw his family members on the day they died. The police explored different motives. One was that Richard's government job, working for Homeland Security, could be the reason why they were killed. They left no stone unturned to get to the truth. During the investigation, a particular challenge they had with the case was the sheer amount of evidence they had to pour over. It took them almost five days to process the crime scene because all of the victims were related. It took additional testing to separate out specific DNA. Donald's DNA was found throughout the crime scene, of course. He was, all, he was over all the time, so that wasn't unusual. Richard's Homeland Security job was ruled out as a motive when it was said that Donald was involved in the occult. They came to this conclusion based on statements he made and evidence they found in his home. Investigators concluded that because the family had been killed on July 28th, they had been slain in a ritualistic fashion that had everything to do with the coming blue moon. Normally, blue moons come only about every two or three years. A blue moon is a spiritual time for some. 
Authorities found themes of a ritualistic killing at the scene of the crime, blunt force trauma, the slit throats, the positioning of the body, and the person of interest had ties to a faith or religion that is indicative of that. The time of death also coincided with what is referred to as a blue moon. They arrested Donald, and as a result, Homeland Security ended their involvement with the case. Donald practiced Wicca. He had a Wiccan worship room in his house with books about witchcraft and a Ouija board. Local pagan followers were offended at the suggestion that Wicca traditions had anything to do with murder. So this angle was debunked. 58-year-old Donald was arrested and charged with three counts of first-degree premeditated murder. One of Donald's co-workers came forward and said that Donald admitted that he'd inherit his mother's assets because he was the eldest living heir. Investigators found that Donald's mother had cut him out of her will. She wrote that he had enough property for himself. She specifically wrote in her will that she wanted to leave everything to her husband, but he passed before she did. So she decided to leave everything equally to her youngest sons. With this knowledge, Donald still kept visiting her on a weekly basis. Though Von Seal and his sons that live with her appeared to live a humble, unassuming life, their bank accounts came up to a sum of $895,608. Donald wanted that money. In the summer of 2015, July to be exact, Donald visited the home and committed horrendous acts upon his family. The same family he knew so well and spent time with each week. It was later disclosed that the reason Von Seal's finger was cut was because Donald tortured his mother to get the safe combination. Witnesses' statements weighed heavy in the case. Neighbors saw Donald leave the house on the night of his weekly drop-in for dinner. He was spotted leaving later than, the no than he normally did with no headlights on. An inmate testified against Donald. He said that Donald confessed to the killing and that he'd been planning it for years. This inmate was in jail for attempted murder. The defense accused him of trying to negotiate a deal. The only problem with that was that he knew the detail of Donald's mother's finger being cut off. This bit of information wasn't common knowledge. Donald's defense claimed he didn't know the details of his mother's will and had done nothing but try to help investigators. He'd willingly given DNA samples and had offered to take a lie detector test, which had been declined. Their star witness, a neurologist, explained how Donald's mental state and several brain injuries meant that it would have been difficult for him to commit the crime. It was insinuated that the offer for the DNA was turned down out of fear that he would pass and blow a very high profile case wide open. His defense painted the picture that the crime had been an act of rage and Donald loved his family. The prosecution were steadfast in alleging it was all about the money in addition to this, the police recovered the possible murder weapon from his home. The defense claims did not hold up in court. The evidence pointed to Donald perpetrating the crime. After nearly four and a half years of waiting trial, five days of jury selection, and six days of testimony, it took the jury little more than four hours to find Donald Hartung Sr. guilty of three counts of premeditated first-degree murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The jury wasn't unanimous on the death penalty, so he avoided that punishment. He had not been allowed to testify at the trial by his legal counsel. He read a statement during his sentence hearing stating that he loved his jury, they paid close attention, but they were duped, and the judge was duped. He said that his DNA was found out at the house but it was not real evidence because he frequented the home all the time. He wanted the judge to declare a mistrial. His appeal was denied. Family members said they felt some justice had been served, but it still won't bring back their loved ones. 
When asked if they thought Donald felt any remorse about what he did, they responded that they saw none. They watched his reaction to the autopsy pictures. They saw none. When he attended the funerals, he never shed a tear at the funerals or at the grave sites. They said that something is missing. He has no feelings. One of the relatives said that she hoped he would get the death penalty. Donald Harton Sr. was incarcerated at the Graceville Correctional Facility in Jackson County, Florida. May his family rest in peace. All of this is alleged. Thanks for watching.